Cure Computation by Sanjong Garg, Susumu Kiyoshima, and Omkar Pandey, and uh, Susumu will give the talk. Okay, so thank you for introduction. So good morning, <coughs> I'm Susumu Kiyoshima, and I'm gonna talk about uh, a new approach to graph for concurrent computation. So this is a joint work with uh, Sanjong Garg and Omkar Pandey. All right. So I guess almost all of you is quite familiar with the multi-path computation, but uh, let me explain what multi-path multi computation is. That is just for confidence, okay? So we take a multi-path computation, or MPC in short. We consider a set of uh, mutually distinct parties, each of whom has a secret input. And our goal is to design a protocol that allows them to compute any function securely on the secret input, okay? And the model we consider in this work is a static malicious adversary with no honest majority. So we require that the MPC protocol remains secure even when the majority of the party doesn't follow the protocol specifications. Okay. Then formally, uh, the security of MPC protocol is defined by using a so-called uh, real versus ideal paradigm. Okay. So we have a real world in which parties compute a function by using a actual MPC protocol. And we also have an ideal world in which the parties compute a function by using a trusted third party. And we require that uh, for any adversary, they exist a simulator in the real ideal world, such that uh, the simulator can output the view that is uh, computationally indistinguishable from the real view of the adversary in the real world. Okay? And this definition intuitively guarantees that the real world has the same level of the security as the ideal world. So it in particular guarantees that the, the MPC protocol in the real world has uh, correctness, privacy, etc. Okay? And uh, the focus of this work is the MPC protocol that satisfies concurrent security. So let me explain what it is. So in concurrent security, we, we consider many sets of the parties who execute the main PC protocol simultaneously, and our goal is to design a protocol that satisfies even this setting, that, that, that provides security even in this setting, okay? And the motivation of, of the study of concurrent security is the fact that uh, this concurrent setting is more general and realistic than the standard, uh, standard setting, okay? So, however, unfortunately, uh, concurrent security is known to be very hard to achieve, and the, in particular, in the, in the case of the secure computation, it is known that the concurrent security is impossible to achieve if we consider natural security, security definitions, such as UC Secure, okay? So this means that if you don't have any trusted setup, such as a common reference tree, then you cannot construct a concurrent security MPC protocol if you use a natural security definition. Okay, then uh, a popular way to bypass this impossibility is to use security definition that is obtained by relaxing uh, standard security definitions. So the idea is to use security definition that is weak enough to, to bypass this impossibility, but still strong enough to guarantee minimum security in many cases. Okay, so of course, uh, obtaining such a good relaxed security definition is not an easy task, but fortunately, we already have uh, several such a definition, and uh, one of the most popular one among them is uh, superpolinear time simulation security, and its variants such as uh, NGPS UC security or shielded Dorak or SP security. Okay? And in this work, we use uh, superpolinear simulation security or SP security, so let me explain what it is. Okay? So, SP security is uh, actually almost identical with the standard. Uh, Polynomial time simulation security. And the only difference is that in SPS security, the simulator is allowed to run in superpolynomial time. Okay? So this means that in the SPS security, the simulator is uh, much, much stronger than the real world adversary. And this is the reason that in this picture, I wrote the simulator much bigger than the adversary. Okay? And uh, intuitively, SPS security guarantees that uh, any attack in the real world can be simulated in the idea world in, in superpolynomial time. So this means that the, if the idea world remains secure against superpolynomial time, super time attack, then SP security guarantees minimum security, okay? And if you consider 
ポピュラルファンクショナリティ、such as commitment functionality or good risk transfer functionality. The idea of it is indeed secure against the super dominant adversary. And so, in such a case, you can use the SPS security with no problems. Okay? And a good point about the SPS security is the fact that we have a lot of positive results about the concurrent secure computation. And in particular, it is known that the concurrent SPS secure MPS protocol is possible under the standard assumption. Okay? And in particular, we have a construction that has only a constant number of RAM and is secure under the minimum assumption, almost the minimum assumption of the existence of semi honest OT and the collision of this Okay? However, it, uh, many of the existing constructions have a drawback, and in particular, they uh, actually only feasibility result because they mix a lot of uh, number of uses of the underlying cryptography bridge. Okay? So in particular, many of the existing construction uses uh, a lot of curve reduction during the proof of honest behavior. And in particular, in, 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 in those curve reduction, they make a number of uses of the underlying primitive uh, to, to reduce the statement about the primitive to a NP complete statement such as the Hamiltonist cycle. Okay? And this is such a reduction is very costly. So we should, it is better if we can avoid such a thing. So this is a so 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 I mean, this is a so so this is the reason that we have to avoid any kind of number of uses of the cryptographic print. Okay. And this is the motivation of the study of the graph of construction of the cryptographic protocol. And in the graph of construction, the underlying cryptographic primitives are used only as a black box. So in particular, they are used only through their input output interface. Okay? And the black box construction of a basic <coughs> protocol has been extensively studied by now, and we already have a lot of positive results. And in particular, in the standard of case, it is known that the black box MPS protocol is possible, and we have a construction that has already cost a number long, and uh, is secure under the minimum assumption of the, of the existence of semi OT. Okay? And uh, in addition, even if because of the concurrent SPS setting, Black box and PC post protocol is still possible. And uh, in addition, we, all, we already have a construction that has only cost a number of <coughs> and has a construction that is uh, secure under the min minimum assumption of the existence of semi authority. Okay? So, since we already have uh, many good results, you may think that uh, there is uh, nothing we can do as further about this area. But that is, uh, not the, that is not the case, and there is still a room for improvement in, this, uh, in the previous work. Okay? So in particular, in the, a drawback of the previous work is the fact that uh, in the previous work, lot of complexity and assumption are made, only opt, made optimal only individually. Okay? So this means that uh, even though we have a construction that has only cost an number of and another construction that is based on semi honest OT, but there is no single construction that has only cost a number run and is secure under the minimum assumption. Okay? So clearly an interesting open question is to achieve the uh, optimum assumption and optimal run complexity simultaneously. And in particular, since the state of, state of the art of the concurrent uh, black box space uh, DSMPC is, is as a polylogram protocol based on semi honest OT and the constant round protocol based on normal optimal assumptions such as uh, homomorphic commitments. An interesting open question is to construct a constant round protocol uh, under the more weak assumptions. <coughs> okay? And this is a problem we study in this work and uh, we show the following stuff. So in this work, we give a black box construction of concurrent SPS secure MPC protocol uh, that has only cost a number long and they secure under the almost minimum assumption of the existence of semi T and the collision of this task function. Okay? So essentially, the contribution of this, of this work is to achieve uh, optimal amount of complexity and almost optimal assumption as simultaneously. Okay? And uh, there is one remark about our result. So even though our result uh, achieve a good amount of complexity and a good assumption simultaneously, uh, our result is uh, actually not strictly equivalent of our uh, previous result. And in particular, uh, uh, 
compared with previous work, previous construction, our construction satisfy a weaker security notion, and in particular, our, our protocol doesn't satisfy composability. So this means that we have to secure, we have to prove security directly in the compact set. Okay? So, so our, our results still left one important question, which is uh, to achieve a minimum assumption and the minimum, minimal of complexity simultaneously uh, when using uh, this strong security notion such as HMS security. Okay? All right. <laughs> so since I, I have explained what I obtained, uh, I will explain how we obtain our results. Okay? So first, let me explain the difficulty of achieving the SP security. So the main difficulty in the of achieving SP security is the fact that we have to prove security at the full-time assumption, even though the simulator lies for all the time. Okay? So this is difficult because if we if we naively design a security detection that internally emulate uh, either the real world or ideal world, then such a reduction would rise for all the time. So we cannot prove security by using such a reduction unless we use a super time assumption. Okay? All right. Then, uh, very, very roughly speaking, uh, previous, previous work overcome this difficulty uh, by constructing a commitment scheme that satisfies strong adaptive security against the uh, super time computation. Okay? So in particular, uh, previous work construct uh, a CC secure commitment or UC secure commitment in shielded Oracle space framework, with both of which guarantee security even when the adversary receives some adaptive uh, super polymetabi helpful information while it, when it is, it is receiving the you know, commitment. Okay? So for example, in the case of the CC secure commitment, the adversary has uh, adaptive access to the decommitment Oracle, which extract the committed value of the commitment by brute force, and the CCS secure commitment provides security even when the adversary has asked to such a such a super point time order. Okay? And uh, previous work uh, used such a strong adaptive commitment scheme to construct the block of comparative of T, and then they use it to construct the block of comparative MC protocol. Okay? <coughs> Then, uh, a drawback of the previous approach is the fact that the commitment scheme with such a strong adaptive security requires uh, no optimal assumption or no optimal output. Okay? So in particular, a CC secure commitment currently requires at least a prelog round, and the UC secure commitment in the series of the framework requires a no optimal assumption such as a homomorphic commitment. Okay? And this is the reason that uh, previous work doesn't achieve uh, optimal level of complexity and optimal assumptions simultaneously. Okay? So clearly, uh, a natural approach to improve the previous work is, uh, somehow to, is to somehow construct uh, this adaptive commitment with better level of complexity and better assumption. Okay? However, uh, it seems that uh, following this approach is uh, not so easy. So in this work, we use a different approach. Okay, so now the, what, what is our approach? So our approach is to obtain the black box concurrent for black box construction of a concurrent space OT protocol uh, without using an uh, expensive commitment scheme and instead by using just a standard normal commitment. Okay? And in particular, since black box normal commitment can be obtained from one function in a black box way in, in just a constant number of runs, uh, such a commitment can be obtained very easily. Okay? So essentially our approach is to, hard, uh, it, it to work hard on both the protocol rather than working hard on the commitment scheme. Okay? So in the rest of this talk, I will explain how we obtain this OT protocol from normal commitment. Okay? So, so the key observation that we use in this work is uh, some of the well-known facts that the non-uniform security uh, provide, uh, already provide uh, some kind of security against super polymer type computation. Okay? So, in particular, we use the fact that uh, non uniform security provides security even when the adversary obtains some, some, some non uniform advice that is computed in super polymer type. As long as this advice is, compu is computed before the protocol started and afterwards everything works in polynomial time. Okay? So, so in this work, we use this 
static sec security against superpolar of them have superpolar of time computation to construct the black hole comparison with the protocol. Okay? All right, so let me explain about the protocol. So the overall structure of our, our, of our OT protocol is a combination of the existing uh, black box OT protocol and the existing uh, black box normal protocol. Okay? And uh, the details of our OT, of, uh, the details of our OT protocol is not necessary for this talk. And uh, all you have to know about our, 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 our OT protocol is the fact that our protocol satisfies these three key properties. Okay? So the first key property is the fact that in our commitment, in our protocol, each party commits uh, some trapped information at the beginning of the protocol. Okay? <coughs> and the second key property is the fact that uh, we design a simulator that works by extracting uh, adversary the trapdoor by brute code at the beginning of the protocol and then uh, commit to some special value in the number commit. Okay? So our simulator commits some cheating value in the number commit. Okay? And the third key property is the fact that we design our protocol so that uh, this simulation strategy works unless the adversary somehow commit uh, some special value in the number of commitment by somehow running uh, the trapdoor information. Okay? So we use uh, these three properties to prove our security. And in particular, we prove security by using a hybrid argument from the real world to the ideal world. Okay? So let me explain the idea of a hybrid argument. And for simplicity, let us consider a simplified setting in which there are only two qualified sessions and the set that is corrupted in both sessions. Okay? Then, uh, in the first step of the, key, of the hybrid, we, we of the hybrid argument, uh, we show that the adversary cannot commit the special value in his normal commitment in any session. Okay? And uh, the, the key point of this step is the fact that uh, in this step, we consider real world in which no super polynomial computation is used. Okay? So we can use the standard hybrid uh, property of our commitment to, to argue that the algorithm, our transfer information is hidden against the adversary. So we can use and we can use it to argue that the uh, adversary cannot commit the uh, special value in the normal commit. Okay? So in this picture, this blue color means that uh, the adversary doesn't commit the special value in his normal commit. Okay? And now, in the second hybrid, we start using the super polynomial computation power. And in particular, we extract trap trap, trap, we extract trap trap from the adversary by brute force and then commit the some special value in our normal value commitment in the first session. Okay? And the key point here is the fact that uh, even though we use a super polynomial computation, this super polynomial computation occurred only at the beginning of the first session, and afterwards everything works in polynomial time. Okay? So we can use a non uniform hiding property of our normal commitment to argue that even though we change the value that is committed in our normal commitment, this hybrid is still indistinguishable from the BMSR. Okay? And in addition, we can use the non-uniform non-variability of, non of our non-variable commitment to argue that uh, even though we change the committed value of our non-variable commitment, the committed value of the adversary's non-variable commitment doesn't change. So we can argue that even in this hybrid, uh, the adversary doesn't commit the special value in his non-variable commitment. Okay? So this is the reason that even in this picture, the adversary's non-variable commitment is written in blue color. Okay? Right. Then, in the third hybrid, we sh start simulating the first session completely. Okay? And uh, we show the indistinguishability by using the fact that uh, everything works in polynomial time after the beginning of the first session, and the fact that the adversary doesn't commit the special value in his normal commitment. Right? Then, uh, in, the fourth half, well, in the fourth hybrid, uh, we start simulating the second session. And in particular, we extract the trapdoor by brute force and commit to some special value in the normal commitment in the second session. Right? So again, the key point in this hybrid is the fact that uh, even though we use the uh, super polynomial computation, this super polynomial computation occurs only at the beginning of the second session, and afterwards everything works in polynomial time. Okay? So again, we use, we use uh, non-uniform hiding of, of our normal commitment 
to argue that the, this hybrid is indistinguishable from the previous one. And we also use non-uniform non non-variability of, non of our normal commitment to argue that the adversary doesn't commit the special value in his normal commitment in this hybrid. Okay? And in the final hybrid, uh, we simulate the second session completely, and we prove uh, indistinguishability by using the fact that uh, everything works in polynomial time after the beginning of the second session. And, uh, and the adversary doesn't copy the special value if it's normal. Okay? Okay, ah, so, okay, so, so this is a very rough idea of, uh, our, of, our, of our analysis. Then the, since the, the actual analysis is more complex, uh, for detail, please use a paper, okay? So, so in this way, we obtain the black box comparison of the protocol. So then we use it to, to obtain the black box compared to SPS LPC protocol by just combining our OT protocol with the existing uh, OT hybrid black box UCMPC protocol, okay? So there is one authority that uh, since we consider SPS setting, which doesn't guarantee flexibility, we can not we cannot analyze uh, the security of our of our MPC protocol in a modular way. Okay. So, however, uh, we can still prove the security of our MPC protocol by just aligning the analysis of our OT protocol in the MPC setting. Okay. So this means that we don't need uh, we don't need any new technique in this in this part. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let me conclude. So the result of this work is the black box concurrent SPS KMPC protocol that has only constant number run and it's secure it, and it's secure under the almost minimum assumption of the of the existence of terminal T and the polygon is touch map. Alright, so this is the conclusion of our stuff. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is, is there any questions? Okay, so it's a track, uh, track uh, switch break now, and uh, thank you to both speakers of the session. <laughs>